What's up guys, Asian here again with another video and today we're going to be discussing this particular graph that we're seeing on ESO logs. This has kind of been making the rounds on the official forums and on Reddit and there's been a lot of misinterpretation of this chart itself and as well as other charts that are coming from this similar uh, page here. So I just wanted to kind of make a video looking at this chart itself and examining it from an actual more statistical minded sort of view so for those of you guys who are not aware i did my bachelor's in computational biology so i did a lot of theory of statistics classes so i know quite a bit about the mathematics behind statistics did my master's in biostatistics and epidemiology so again a lot of stats training there and then i'm doing my current master's in environmental epidemiology so right now uh, i am definitely I'd say pretty well versed when it comes to statistics, not just in the actual application of statistics, but also the theory behind statistics and the proper sort of interpretation of results and things like selection bias and other things you want to take in consideration when you're doing certain type of studies. And I really would consider something like ESO logs to be something like a study. It basically would fall probably under something uh, like a review article, maybe sort of um, kind of just in aggregate data. So you could consider ESO logs to be kind of a very good data source if you want to do a study on what's the best DPS in ESO at a given point in time, for example. Um, so in that regard, I do consider this to be a statistical question, uh, not necessarily something that can be answered just by looking at graphs, because um, as the saying goes, there are lies, there are damned lies, and then there's statistics. Um, while numbers, generally speaking, are pretty much agnostic when it comes to whether it is the truth or not, a number is a number, um, the way people can interpret them and sort of explain the numbers can definitely be heavily misinterpreted and even completely wrong. So just to make this a little bit easier to kind of just make you guys see everything, I'm going to really uh, quickly here just hide the webcam because you don't really need to see me in order to, you know, hear me, obviously. Okay, so this is the ESO Logs website. You can get to it here just from up here on the website name right here, esologs.com. This is a free site, so anybody can see this sort of things. Uh, you might need to make an account, but uh, it's kind of up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, but generally speaking, ESO Logs, those of you guys who haven't been really keeping up with it, is basically sort of a third-party website that takes combat logs that are generated from ESO, uh, so the ESO, the client itself, is able to generate these combat logs using slash encounter log, all one word, into the chat window. This third-party website then takes that log, which is a text file, and basically reads it, parses through all of the different whatever it is that goes into a log file, and then just sort of makes it into a easily digestible sort of visual uh, method and so this has been out since uh, May 20th so that's when elsewhere was first released on PC uh, this is obviously not going to be coming onto console just due to hardware limitations limitations due to the console manufacturers themselves Sony and Microsoft um, so this again is a chart it has been making the rounds around the official forums and the reddit uh, subreddit um, so this basically is taking a look at DPS. So you can see here we sorted based on damage uh, in Sunspire to show just DPS. We're showing the 95th percentile of all DPS over a range of the past two weeks. The current standings and their aggregating were using the normalized scores. So one of the big things that I uh, first noticed with the first post, um, the official forums I believe, uh, was the fact that people were interpreting these as DPS values. This is not DPS. This is an aggregate normalized score. So what normalized score means is that you are usually taking some sort of uh, markers, uh, usually so like, a, like a base control, so to speak, and using that to help with normalize scores. Uh, basically, normalization means you're applying some sort of weight to each individual based on certain values. So for example, if I were to do a weighted average, basically what I'm doing is, depending on what specifically I'm studying, I might just apply random weights from like a um, just from like an exponential function onto each uh, each sort of 
each value that I want to add into the average. So for a good example of this would be like if I'm uh, taking a random sample from the population and I'm taking only a certain percentage of the sample uh, as my controls, uh, in a case control study, I might want to apply a weight to those controls because uh, they are not necessarily representing the entire population. Um, so that's something that you kind of want to keep in mind when we're talking about normalization. Uh, it usually means that there is going to be a weight applied to somewhere that's taking into account some differences that are going to vary between the parses. I'm not 100% sure sure how the normalization is happening behind the scenes but we do know that it is normalized because it is telling us it is an aggregated is it is a normalized score so what these scores really mean down here is how they all stack up against each other so 100% would be basically uh, the best score that is the you know the number one sort of benchmark that we want to hit here so all of these are in performance relative to that idealized score that 100 percent score here so these are not dps values one of the big things that i saw was oh this is dps values these are not dps values so again these are not dps values so basically what these is that what this is is performance relative to maximum so for example stamina templars are performing on average at 81.11 when you normalize the scores compared to the average. So they're about 90%, 19% less effective than whatever 100% is. Uh, Stamina Necromancers are doing uh, just over, just, right? uh, just under 40%. 0.4% uh, less than the 100% normalized score. If you want to look at DPS, we need to aggregate using per second amounts, and this would be giving us the actual average DPS. Um, so now we actually have damage per second so this is the tra chart that you would want to look at if you want to take a look at dps now a lot of people have realized this and swapped over this chart which is really good the downside is they're still interpreting this the this chart here kind of incorrectly so one of the things that a lot of people are saying is take a look at the difference between the bottom stamina dps or magic dps and the top stamina dps or magic dps just looking at stamina DPS, the average here is 67.2k compared to stamina Templars, which is 55.15k. So we'll call it 55.2k, resulting in a 12k DPS difference. Now, people are saying, well, look, look at this. This is a huge disparity in balance. Obviously, stamina Necromancers are incredibly, incredibly strong right now. You know, this is not very well balanced here. Um, and there is some truth to it if you guys just take a look at the average DPS. However, you have to consider where the data source is coming from. So one of the big things that you always have to do when you're taking a look at information that's given to you, whether that's in a chart form or an article form, is where is the data coming from? Is this coming from a biased source? Is there selection bias coming into play here? Now, ESO logs is not automatically collect all the data in the game. It's just not something that is technologically feasible at this point rather people need to voluntarily start the combat log and upload them to this website and this particular aggregation is only using a publicly available log so if you decide to upload your log but keep it private it will not actually show up here it will not be used sort of to generate this graph here so this is only on publicly available parses so that's the first thing we got to consider. There may be people, there may be a bunch of logs that are private and that we are not seeing, that are not being reflected in this graph here. The second thing you want to consider is who exactly is uploading these logs here? Are they going to be the lower end of the DPS scale or are these guys going to be the higher end of the DPS scale? The other thing too you have to consider is of those people who are uploading them, where what sort of level are they playing at? Are they playing at the very, very high end, you know, leaderboard, score running guilds? Or are they playing more towards sort of the middle grounds, those sort of progression style guilds? Or are they uh, sort of leaning more towards the lower ground? Are these, um, you know, people who are struggling to complete Vet Sunspire but are still uploading the logs uh, because they want to know where to improve and things like that. So you got to need to consideration all these things. Where is this data coming from? And I can tell you from experience uh, that a lot of people who are uploading these logs to ESO logs are primarily going to be progression style guilds or they're going to be score running guilds. Um, one of the discords that I'm in, we are a farming discord for Sunspire and part of farming and sort of vetting people, we log everything and we upload these logs uh, to our personal guild here in, on ESOlogs.com. And so part of 
that means that uh, some of our parsers might be skewed a little bit because basically we're pugging runs. Um, granted, these are very high level pugs, but we're still pugging runs. These are not necessarily organized groups. That might skew DPS a little bit because obviously with more organized groups, you can achieve higher DPS. Now, if you take into consideration all that stuff, that the people who are uploading these logs are typically speaking going to be people who play within the meta, who are aware of the meta, uh, then things start to things look a little bit different here. So you're going to see a lot more Nightblade parses because that was what was meta last patch. People are still maybe still working on getting stamina necromancers, which are the meta this patch. Kind of the same thing for magic DPS. Templars and Sorks are going to be overrepresented because those were the meta for the past two patches. Magic Dragonite DPS are going to be a little bit less represented, and certainly Magic Wardens and Magic Necromancers are going to be underrepresented because those two specs are considered to be the weakest Magic DPS. And obviously, Werewolf DPS is going to be even far fewer represented because there's just fewer and fewer werewolves that are in these vet trial guilds, these type of guilds who are uploading these logs. And it's reflected in the number of parses that we see. Stamina Necromancers, 1,282 parses. Stamina Nightblades. 1,830 parses, Magicka Templars, 2,248 parses, Magicka Sorcerers, 1,663 parses. The other classes here don't break 1,000 at all. In fact, if you take a look at Magicka Warden, there's only 59 parses from Magicka Wardens or Veteran Sunspire. So again, another emphasis on where exactly is this data representing. It's representing DPS in Veteran Sunspire. So we need to consider what is the external validity of this sort of application. Can we use this data and say that, okay, standard necromancers are going to be the top DPS across all pieces of content just based on what we see in Sunspire? I would argue maybe not. Um, you know, Cloudrest. Asylum, they're more magicka friendly. So obviously you might not want to run stamina necromancer there. Um, so there's a lot of things going on here in this graph. So while there is some truth that there is going to be a DPS disparity between the top and the bottom, there always will be. It's an MMO. Um, yes, there is. If you just take a look at this, it's a 12k difference. If you take a look at the max parses, it's about a 14k difference or so. But when you take into consideration all the other things that I've talked about here, where the data is coming from, uh, is this data going to be externally applicable to other dungeons, other trials? Who are the people who are parsing on these tunes? Where are these parses coming from, basically? What are the total number of parses? So if we take a look at Stamina Templars versus Necromancers, we only have 10% of the number of parses for Stamina Templars as we do with Stamina Necromancers. That's going to skew our numbers quite a bit here. Um, so yes, there is going to be some disparity. There's going to be some DPS disparity between the top DPS class and the lowest DPS class. I'm not going to deny that. That is just the nature of MMOs. That's just the nature of games. There's always going to be a best spec. Truly balancing a game as large as ESO and as complex as ESO is quite the challenge. But people who are generally blowing this out of proportion and they're not really taking into context all these different biases. There's very heavy selection bias coming in here. There's very weak external validity here. Um, so generally speaking, uh, people are definitely blowing these, this graph out of proportion, misinterpreting it, and sort of telling people all these incorrect conclusions. I wouldn't say incorrect, inaccurate conclusions uh, using these graphs. So remember, whenever you're seeing something like this, definitely take a look at where the data is coming from, how is the data generated, um, things like that. Those are all questions you have that you should be asking whenever you read anything that is remotely scientific uh, at all. Um, so when I first saw this post on the official forums and on Reddit, the first thing I asked them, the first thing I told them is basically, one, this is only for Sunspire parses. You can't necessarily take this to other trials or four-man content or even solo content. Take a look at the number of parses there are. There's definitely going to be fewer Magic and Warden parses than Magic and Sorcerer parses for certain. Where are these parses coming from? These are voluntarily volunteered data uh, so volunteer data naturally has some level of selection bias built into it uh, and even though people are saying oh these are aggregated these are normalized yes aggregation and averaging does sort of eliminate some biases here and there uh, but it's not going to get rid of all bias and selection bias is not something that can be removed from uh, aggregating or averaging 
Um, so definitely a lot of things you want to take into consideration when you take a look at this. Um, so the bottom line here is that yes, there is a little bit of a DPS disparity here, but it is not necessarily going to be as blown out as you see it here uh, today in these graphs. The best way to kind of take a look at differences would be to really examine people who truly have a good understanding of the game. Lyco is definitely one of the best sources for in terms of taking a look at where DPS sort of lie uh, next to each other. For example, um, this is definitely a very good tool to have, but for right now we need to be a little bit cautious as to how we interpret this data. So that is it for this video. If you guys have any questions about ESO logs or how you should interpret this data or about statistics in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer the question to the best of my ability. Hope you guys found this informative and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.